Hello everybody and welcome to SimDeck here in the Midlands. I've been invited today by the wonderful guys here to test out the latest and greatest inventions in the motion simulator market. Now for those of you who are new to sim racing or have been in the market for a while, the concept of motion has been one which is very much uh, foreign to the user. You know, gone are the days where you had to spend tens of thousands of pounds to buy a motion simulator set up. Now for a very little price you can get just as good a quality. We're going to have a look in today at some of the products on offer, ranging from the S1 product here just behind me, with S2 which is also sat beside me, and then the S3 product further down the line. We're also going to be chatting to Simon, who is the head of technical over at SimDeck, and he's going to be breaking it down for you, explaining what's behind these components, whilst I'm going to be doing some driving and showing you what the sensation like is to feel. So with that said, let's jump into a review of the S1 and S2 motion platforms. This one is running off uh, Xbox console. Oh nice, okay. Um, that, sorry, that bottom one there is the one you tried last, last time, time, right? Okay. So there's two sets there. So the the S1, as we call it now, is what you is what we essentially what we started with. Yeah. So just giving you the surge. The surge, yeah. Um, but this one's got another unit plumped on top of it. So it literally just uh, it's so compatible, it just drops on top. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So that gives you pitch and roll. Yeah. But it's preset. Okay. So uh, that's the main difference. When it's console driven, the movement is preset. When it's PC driven, you can full. It's, um, it's graduated. And so that's all the platforms turned on on this. Gosh. I like so. the LEDs, that's a good touch as well. <laughs> yeah. So accelerate, you should see the S1 move oh, forwards. Yeah. But it'll pitch as well. So the thing with that, that's working on the pedals and the wheel, so even though it's in the pits, it, you're right. still getting the motion, because it's not linked to the game at all. Ah, it's only the fact that you're pressing the pedals over right. in the right places. And so is that a limitation of the console, is that what you're yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, cool, go ahead. So, you'll find, you should probably just have a try on these. So on that um, remote, yeah. So, yeah. There you go. On this one, yeah. I think which one it's set up. Uh, one, two, and three. So you've got the seats, the S2 and the S1. Right. On each of those, you can switch those off individually. So you can have it. So you can try them out. Yeah. You You're on that belt fairly snug. Yeah. Just think. You can't turn them all off. <laughs> and what, yeah, and I think that's the, the beautiful simplicity, isn't it? It's,
Yeah. Well, we let's say we made that then. Version one, it's part of the seat, we made it separate there. So you can use the tongue surge off the top, so you just have the. Uh, you can see from the back anyway, Mike, that's it. So now you've just got the S2 platform, it's still fit to roll. Yeah. Drop the surge. So you'll get fewer. Uh, false movements on the acceleration braking. You know what, I don't think it's too bad though, I don't think, I think by having the search introduced you don't lose anything from the ghost movements or the false movements, yeah. you know what I mean? My driving's leaving a lot to be desired, but apart from that, it's... So again, the, I mean, the trigger points are fixed in terms of the movement in the console. <laughs> so, uh, here we are, like I say guys, we're going to be having a look first of all at the Simdeck S1 and S2 platforms. Joining me is Simon, like I say, the wonderful man, uh, one of the brains behind all these products. And Simon, the S1 and S2 products, what can I as a user see on the technical stage of this site? We've got the, uh, the basic specs on it. I mean, to be honest, on the console side, I don't think people are that bothered about how fast it is. They want to know what it feels like because at, at the moment on consoles, there's very little, I think, if anything, available for console users to f start feeling motion. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I think the consumer market has very much negated and neglected, I should say, the console side of things. You know, if you wanted to have some sign of sensation, whether it's a set of Corsa F1 or even Forza Horizon, the concept of motion is one which is very much alien. And what you guys have done now is you've brought this home. Um, my understanding is you can, if you've got an Xbox or a PlayStation, you can you can use this software in the motion platform, is that correct? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the motion itself reacts to what the pedals are doing and the wheel, mm -hmm. so it's more linked to the wheel okay. than the console. So, well, as you'll see, when you press the pedal and move the wheels, the deck will move, it's only that in the game, you feel as if it's acting in the right position, the right place. And that's what's so amazing. And throughout the course of today, when I'm doing these reviews, you'll probably hear me refer to simplicity and, and elegance throughout the whole way. The fact is, and you can correct me here, is regardless of which wheel and pedals I've got, I will be able to integrate this with the motion platform. Is that correct? There's, there's two different versions. There's the Thrustmaster one, which uh -huh. is the main one that we've developed. Okay. So it depends on the plug on the back of the pedals and wheel. Okay. So at the moment, those pedals plug into our control unit. Right. Then from the pedals, there's a wire back to the back of the wheel. Okay. So the wheel doesn't know that we're picking up on that signal. Mm -hmm. So the console and the wheel, okay. they're connected directly. It's just we're reading what the pedals are doing. Absolutely amazing. And I'm so excited to get in and have a shot. Obviously, with the S1 and S2 models, here we'll have the sensations of surge. Uh, we'll have a little bit of pitch and we'll also have some roll. Is that, that yes. correct? Yes. Perfect. You've also got the seatbelt tensioner as well. Yes, and this is a very exciting concept. So the idea here being that when you're on the, the, the brake pedal, you'll be able to feel that sensation as if you're in a road car or a, a race car. Well, yeah, it's just well. adding to the sensations. Amazing, amazing. So with that said, guys, I'm going to jump in and uh, have some driving and we'll see how we get on. So well, here we are now. We're sat in the, the cockpit for the motion platform. We've got the S1 and the S2 here. And am I right in saying time bump? We've only got the S1 turned on. No, sorry, S2 and S1 are on. Apollo. Plus the seat. Plus the seat. So the sensations we're going to be getting here is obviously the surge back and forth, as you can see just now, as well as a little bit of pitch and roll if I drive past it. And as I sit in this cockpit just now, it's amazing how all the little nuances that you're perhaps not familiar with seeing in a sim racing market as a console user can really add to the experience. I'm sat on a set of course as we drive around in the Ferrari 458s, and whilst I cannot afford a Ferrari, I certainly do get that feeling. We've got the fans as well located either side of the wheelbase, which will respond to my acceleration. And as a user, it really just elevates the products and the quality of products. I was having some, some chats earlier with Simon, and we were saying that the noise level as well of this product is really quite astonishing how quiet it's been. I mean, it's taken a long time to get there. That was what I was going to ask, how much work has to go into the development cycle of a product like this? Uh, we've probably put like, two years into that. Yeah. Amazing, two years and the, the finished product is so, so nice. It's say just over a metre long and just under 700mm uh, wide. It's 
so nice and compact that if you had a sim ring already, it is compatible with a wide range of them, and it can quite easily and quite seamlessly fit into your office or your, your home setup. As I see the surge with the platform as well move forward, there's nothing that's too over the top. A common complaint that for people like myself and anyone who's maybe experienced in the motion platform industry is that it can be quite overkill cyber. And this is something that I'm sure you've maybe seen when you're doing your, your research and planning for this product is that you can go on some, some motion platforms and you turn the wheel and it's trying to throw you out like you're on a roller Well, from the start, we always wanted it to be immersive and informative, but not imposing or distracting from your, well, your driving and your enjoyment of it. No, exactly. And I think imposing is the perfect word. As I look at the design, it's so sleek, it's so simple, and it's very much plug and play. Is that correct? Yeah. So, um, if I was to purchase one and it was to arrive, in terms of the plug and play process, how does that, how does that go about? Well, I mean, there's simple instructions on the website, but basically you plug in the mains at the front, and then there are cables going to our control box, and that's it. Which is so amazing. A lot of people will complain that when they try to enter the motion market, it can be so over-engineered, and for the longest time it has. And now we have such a simple process that anyone who has a console can pick up and, and start you know, getting this motion sensation. Well, don't forget, there's nothing to stop you using this particular setup on PC if you don't want to go through the process of all the sim software. But that's exactly it. And it's, uh, if you go have a look on the website, it's simdeck.com, correct? Yeah. Um, you can see on there they've got the different options. They, they break everything down for you. They'll have the correct numbers. I may misquote some slightly. And uh, it really can introduce you to this motion side of sim racing, which adds an additional element that can't be overlooked. And although I'm driving the car kind of casually just now, something that I've noticed is that for a lot of people when they get into to motion and sim racing, is there's quite a steep learning curve perhaps because in the past the equipment has been so over the top, whereas here I think from out the box you can really you know, get those finer details and get a greater fidelity of your driving standards. Yeah, I mean, obviously in this mode there aren't, there aren't any adjustments made, it's, the motion is either on or off, yeah. but a lot of time in racing you're either on or off anyway, so well, they, that's exactly it, and I can only imagine as you're racing side by side, like I say, you've got this this feel for the steering wheel and for your body now as well, of not only the acceleration and the braking, but having the, the pitch and roll that comes from the, the S2 system. And obviously something that's quite important to, to consider for the Sim Deck uh, product line, if you're someone who's either already got one of your products or is looking to perhaps get into this, it's all fully modular, isn't it? Yes. So if I have an S1, I can essentially, for lack of a better term, drop an S2 on top of it. Yeah, right? well, exactly that. And of course, if you've got your own cockpit, take that off the S1, put the S2 on, literally sit it on the top and then drop your cockpit on top of the S2. That's it, it was, you know, we were saying, saying earlier, it's professional grade motion at consumer level uh, comfort, I suppose, is the best word for this. And the other thing I'm noticing just now, Simon, is I'm driving is, again, Previously, latency was always a huge issue for, for someone and it's, as you race, I guess, faster cars or circuits that are perhaps a bit more intensive, that, that small latency can have a huge impact and we're by no means saying that this gets rid of latency, it will forever be an issue until you spend half a million pounds, but I've noticed that with the, the products on offer here, the latency isn't actually that huge, is, it, is that something you guys have been able to kind of counteract or develop around with the lights? Well, I mean, obviously it's something you've got to bear in mind, but I think we've been um, lucky in the way that we've designed it, it doesn't seem to come into it anyway. Yeah, it's perfect, it's honestly... I mean, you can't change the, you can't change the motion per car. Sure. So, it, you know, it is a, sort of a one-size-fits-all really for the cars. But, but all, what we're doing is offering something to people who you know, normally not have anything. Well, that's it, and, you know, for something that's out-of-the-box plug-and-play, it is... I've been, I'm very comfortable with this, you know, it's not been a steep learning curve, it's not made me, you know, feel uneasy or sick or anything, it's, it feels a very natural transition, and like I say, although I don't own a Ferrari, I can imagine driving around that hill into Scotland might be, might be something But like I think this. as well, if people wanted to get into motion, and they've got a console, but they haven't got to go to the expense of going out and buying a PC, exactly. and then buying the motion platform to try it out. That, they could try this on their existing Xbox or PS4, if they wanted then, to upgrade at some point, you know, these will switch to PC only mode. And that's it, it's, that's the, the thing that I love about this is that you've obviously kept the consumer or the user in mind when they're, you know, entering this product sphere is it's not a case of you buy this product and then you reach a dead end, you were saying earlier, it's now 
you can, your equipment can come with you, so if you need to justify this as an expense or you want to make a, a sizable investment to your SIP rank SIP, you can carry it for as many years as you need, you know. I think even we're surprised how well that works on a console, it's, oh, and it's only very simple motion. But it, it, yeah, it's. But again, who didn't want to overdo the lift and drop on braking and accelerating it's on the S2? Like you're just you're just adding no. a bit to yeah. it, aren't you? Exactly. Because otherwise, it makes you feel like you're in an American car or a boat, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Especially the um, sway, you start rocking from side to side. Yeah, that's it. It can uh, it can be almost a bit overpowering, isn't it? Like we were saying before, you know, it can definitely have an impact but no honestly the, the fact that it comes out of the box like this is you know it reminds me of when you buy like an apple product or, or something like that there's so the the nuances and the, the attention to detail is what really allows you just to be so comfortable and actually with it you know well we've got one of these on the way to alaska at the moment really yeah amazing that's i saw it on the website and place an order so it's on its way to Anchorage. No way, that's amazing. And that's the so you guys do ship everywhere, you know. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously and we were saying you offer, you know, full after sale support, whether it's an email or they can pick up the phone, right? Yes. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So should we jump to the Yeah, okay. We should fill the right service for you. I mean, I think some of these, I've seen one where the actuators are that precise yeah. that the whole thing was doing this all the way down the track because it was picking up every input in the circuit. And again, it was just rattling your eyeballs out. Exactly. For like a professional end, that makes perfect sense. But for consumers, they don't want that. They want something they can enjoy but experience. Well, I think, to be honest, if you can drive with all the distractions going on, you should make, in theory, it should make you a better driver. Exactly. I did, yeah. Sorry. I've, I've set those up as escape buttons. It works especially, <laughs> but especially with the motion, if you're going to go off the track, yeah. If you press those, it's because the deck starts. It will react to everything right. that's going on as you roll the car. Oh, of course, the deck's yeah, trying to roll you as well. That change in um, inclination of the road there at the bottom of that hill, don't you?
promise you if you get it wrong. <laughs> okay, guys, so now here we are at the S3, and this is very much the bigger brother of the S1 and S2 that we saw earlier. So I brought you around here because there's so much going on. I don't know where to start. I was hoping you could maybe guide me through some of the, the nuances of this product. Well, I guess if we start at the bottom, mm -hmm. you've got the traction loss unit, which okay. does what it says. That will pivot the whole unit mm -hmm. side to side on traction loss, okay. driven by the car Perfect. in the game. Yeah. We've got the S1, which we had on the console version. Yes. This is obviously, again, driven by the software. So you'll get the surge on braking and accelerating, mm -hmm. and also depending on the speed and the um, power of the car, you'll get shift kick. Okay, yeah. We've got the S3, which is similar to the S2 but adds heave. Okay. And again, we've got our new seat belt tensioner, which is the sim belt. This one, this is a standard seat, we're not bolting or drilling the seat at all. Right. This bolts onto the seat base frame. Uh -huh. And all we do is put the straps through the holes in the seats, which are designed for the seat belt anyway. That's amazing. So I guess the, the best example for this would be, if we, rather than taking a car through the Highlands of Scotland, we were to take a GT3 car to Brands Hatch, for example. Now with this heat, we're going to feel that compression yes. through. We're going to feel a bit more power on the on the braking. We're going to feel that tighten up a bit more of us. And like you say, with the traction loss, as a user now, I'm going to be able to modulate my throttle control a bit better. Is that fair, yeah. would you say? Okay, awesome. And then obviously we still do have the, the winds, um, or the fans, I should say, that are corresponding to your throttle movement? Yeah, these are, these are different to the ones on that one. That one, they're either on or off. Okay. This one, they're actually speed dependent. Amazing. And then we've obviously got um, these base shakers around the side as well. So in terms of, as a user, what might I experience when, with these on the module now? Well, as opposed to, well, we can do a single one, but with these, it's quadraphonic. So essentially, each one is replicating what the wheel's feeling. Amazing. So, so you put the front left right on a uh, exactly, curve. Exactly, right? So. Uh, it's all these finer attention to details now, so it's a much, like I say, it's a much bigger bigger brother to the previous product, but by no means are you going to lose out by going with Well, no, I mean, if, say, if you go that route, all of that is upgradable to this anyway. Which, again, amazing, it just comes back to this fully modular system, which is the bit that I love so much, is that no matter what stage of the ecosystem you come in at, you will get a great product, and you can continue to develop yeah. that product as you move forward. Um, we obviously have a direct drive uh, wheel on here, is that correct? Yes. And a uh, fancy pedal system, which I'll let you explain if that's okay. Yeah, well, I mean, they're um, done in development with another company, mm -hmm. but they're um, hydraulic brake. Amazing. Okay, so in terms of, uh, for someone maybe who's a console user who's going to be coming up to the, the PC platform, what does this kind of mean? Well, you, you're just getting a better feel in the pedals, okay. which I think is probably one of the most important things, I assume. Yeah, 100%. When I was doing some testing earlier, you were obviously showing us around the, the kits. It was definitely, there was a, more of a transition phase, I guess, under braking. You're able to modulate that a bit more. And so it's an amazing product. Of course, it does come with the, the TV, or the, I should say the monitor integration, fully adjustable up uh, and down as well. Well, as only, well in terms of the, the holes at the back. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not adjustable in use, but you oh. can unbolt it. Perfect. And put it in another position if you wanted to. Yeah, and then of course the the chair can be adjusted, the wheel deck can be adjusted as well. But again, on our cockpit, you can adjust the seats. The wheel moves in and out. Okay. Obviously, you can move the wheel up and down. Uh -huh. The pedals have got adjustment up and down and backwards and forwards. Yeah, it looks like they've got quite a bit of angle there. I, I'm not going to put you on the spot unless you know how much of an adjustment is there. But it looks like there's quite a bit of, of angle. I think it's here. about 20, 25 degrees. You tend to leave those set and then move the seat and the wheel to suit. That's it, exactly. So, I mean, what I'm thinking here is if I am um, someone who perhaps has a, a younger brother or I've got a relative who's a huge racing fan, they can come round to the house, experience motion, but have it adjusted to them and have their own experience, which is, is amazing. Yeah, all we need to do now is work out memory on the seat and the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Press the buttons. <laughs> well, that's exactly it. And um, obviously, I was saying before as well, for a product like this, um, it might not be apparent on the site, or maybe it is, I should say. Uh, but you can, obviously, optional upgrades in terms of you guys will be able to provide support with installing wheels and pedals. and We can provide as much or as little as people want. Okay. So if somebody who's already got a setup and just wants one piece, we can do that. Or we offer a full, you know, turnkey, ready-to-go setup. Amazing, amazing. So I'm, I'm so excited to get in and do some driving. Have a go. Awesome.
amount of spins that I'm having that you might be a bit disappointed with. <laughs> I'm glad to see somebody else does it as well. It's amazing the, the sensation and the feeling that I'm getting from the, the traction loss. Like as as the car is starting to go, admittedly it's too late to catch it, but that, there's a split second where you can feel it just before it goes. It's before the, you know visually you've yeah. seen it, and if you can catch it in that phase, I think for me that's probably one of the best examples of where having something like this will actually gain you lap time because if I was sat at home in a normal ring without motion I wouldn't be able to yeah. catch that. Well um, you'd have to wait for the wheel to tell you. Yeah exactly and the, the other thing that I noticed was that um, I used to come into the, the old chicane, well the, the last chicane of the F1 yeah. track, I think it's uh, club is it? The left hander? Right. Uh, as you strike the curve the sensation that you get from this side of the motion platform to with the heave to translate that if, if I was to close my eyes I could quite easily believe I was actually in the real car you know the the motion profile is set so perfectly here um, and I know that obviously if you buy this product for the PC you'll get assistance or um, you, you know you can tweak your own motion profile yeah well we provide profiles so if you've got a PC we will provide the, the bits of information you would need to just enter that data or just load up that profile without need to know what the numbers mean. That's and it should work exactly the same as that for anybody else. That's, it, it's so amazing and it's, you know, I've driven countless laps around Silverstone now on ACC for a whole manner of casual and esports events. And from what I would imagine the car would feel like, I'm actually now experiencing that, again, straight out of the box on this platform. I think it's, like I say, it keeps speaking back to this beautiful simplicity and the, the plug and play nature of the products. For a lot of, of people, you know, their their sim racing hobby is very much something that they get permission from their wife to do. You know, it's like right. you get maybe one night a week where you're so away from the. Put the headset on. Exactly. You don't want the sim the rig to be making. Any noise. And the last thing you want is her kicking off because it's waking. Yeah. But the fact that this is. The fans are waking more. <laughs> that's what I mean. Exactly. That's. <laughs> I'm so surprised by that. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. Amazing bit of kit. I'll give you that. Well, Simon, Simon, yeah, Simon, 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 because it is, it's professional grade motion at consumer level pricing. Uh -huh. it, you know, that's a good price. Interface. <laughs> so, we'll pattern that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>